Hello, welcome along to the Moda Super Series YouTube channel for the latest edition of Tungsten Talk. Glenn Darwin is alongside myself this morning to talk about the news that broke from the PDC yesterday, the announcement of the World Masters, the return of the Winman World Masters under the sanctioning of the Professional Darts Corporation. 204 players will take part in the tournament at the Marshall Arena in Milton Keynes at the end of January and the beginning of February, effectively overtaking what was the predecessor Masters, which was won by Stephen Bunting earlier on this year. Your man, he's got good memories of the World Masters there's twice a champion in the competition. We'll talk about your memories of it in a few moments' time. But first and foremost, your initial thoughts, your initial reactions to this announcement about such a historic tournament coming back to the fore. Well, I was never a fan of the Masters. Um, I think uh, Peter Wright famously said that, you know, what's Chris Dorby got to mourn about for Premier League selection? All he's ever won is a Mickey Mouse trophy. Well, let me tell you, the Windmill World Masters is a pr prestigious tournament and there's nothing Mickey Mouse about that. Because it is a tournament which dates back to the 1970s. You look at some of the names that's on the trophy, the likes of Eric Bristow, the likes of Jockey Wilson, the likes of Filter. Anybody who was anybody in the sport at some point has lifted that title. Michael Van Gerwen included as well in recent times. Yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible tournament. Cutthroat and obviously the, uh, you know, the, the, the set player is synonymous to the World Masters. And, you know, in that era... You know, it was either the World Championships, the News of the World, uh, or the World Masters. And uh, it's an iconic, historical trophy, uh, so much meaning. And just looking at social media yesterday as well, it, it's created a storm. A lot of people forget it's the oldest major in the sport. It foregone the World Championship, which launched in 1978, the BDO. The BDO World Masters started in 1974. We talk about the history, of course, of a lot of events, but there's no major tournament, no big tournament with a bigger history than the World Masters. A lot of players, when they win it, talk about that history. Yeah, it was a, it, it was just the most incredible moment in in the whole town hall. And yeah, and I think you're right. I think my first memory when I, when I hit the winning double against Larry Butler was, look at the names on that trophy. I mean, the trophy itself was rickety, it was old, it was fallen to pieces, but it just meant so much. And uh, I, I even remember taking it to uh, the Riverside at half-time and showing it off as well. Um, it meant an awful lot to an, a lot of players. And, you know, from a personal point of view, it, 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 the World Masters meant so much. Let's talk a little bit more about the format of the competition. 204 players are going to be playing in it. The top 24 players in the PDC order met from the conclusion of the World <coughs> Championships in general will get an automatic invitation through to it. The top 16 players will be seeded. From there on in, well, we've got a whole host of opportunities for a whole host of players. Every other tour card holder that currently holds a card will be able to participate. And then the top eight non-tour card holders from the final 2024 orders of merit from the Challenge Tour, Development Tour, Women's Series, Nordic and Baltic Tour, Asian Tour, the CDC Tour, and then the DPA Tours of Australia and New Zealand will get an invitation, as well as four representatives from the JDC as well. The opportunities for everybody across the darting pyramid is there. Yeah, when Alexander Palace finishes, it's almost like you're, you know, you're at a low. We have a, a World Series in Bahrain, but yeah, yeah, even the players that I haven't picked up my darts, you know, since the World Championships, I think the players, as soon as the Alexander Palace finishes, will then be focusing on uh, the World Masters. When I think of the World Masters, I think of a global event. So to hear, uh, you know, that the countries that you've just mentioned there, the organisations, and also I must, you know, the, to touch on the secondary tours. The women's series have been doing a lot of work on that as well. Opportunity knocks once again, and it's a it's a branding um, example of what the PDC is all about and uh, real opportunity. Right, I've got a few questions here on the format. We'll go straight to the top end. Top sixteen players being seeded. <clears throat> pretty much a standard isn't it these days i would have left it 16 seeds and 16 qualifiers mm -hmm. personally it feels like you've just read all those numbers out for the prelims uh for only eight places uh, and i've just said opportunity knocks there well that's a that's a it's going to be really really difficult to qualify because there's some exceptional players in that uh, situation and uh, I would have liked to have seen 16 and 16 ratio um but you know the pdc have gone with that route as well we've tournaments like that and we speak a lot about the uk open which i suppose has its similar aspects because we talk about a lot of players that maybe we don't see on the tv week <clears> in week out one of the joys of it is 
seeing different players yeah. involved. And look, we, everybody wants to see the elite players. Everyone wants to watch Luke Humphreys, Luke Littler, yeah. Michael Van Gerwen play. Of course they do. But it's the romanticism of a tournament like the World Masters, seeing players that maybe yeah. a lot of casual viewers haven't seen before, and maybe a lot of fans haven't seen too much of, and then become a household name as a result. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the UK Open, there's a little similarity there as well. Uh, and with the Premier League, sort of 17 weeks, you know, Luke Humphreys versus Luke Littler, after a while, it just sort of gets saturated a little bit. And, you know, the romance of a player coming through, uh, like Rob Cross did at the UK Open, uh, wouldn't it be great to see someone from the Asian Tour? But just to get through to that top 32 is going to be really difficult. Yeah, I would have liked to have gone with that ratio there. And hopefully there was a wonderful romantic story of a player coming through one of those tours, you know, with a, with a massive run throughout. You want to see those different names at the World Masters. We'll talk about the amateur qualifiers in a second, but I want to talk about the other tour card holders, the fact that every single player of a card yeah. gets an opportunity because it's been something that a lot of people have spoken about mm -hmm. for a long time, the fact that obviously the Pro Tours have moved to midweek. It's a fully professional tour pretty much now is, is the PDC. And a lot of players, as a consequence, particularly down the rankings, have moaned about they haven't got enough action here and there if they don't qualify for things. Has this bridged that gap between having to be good enough to qualify for tours, but also giving players outside, particularly the top 32, opportunity to play in big events? I have one or two players who I sort of go to. When the news come out, I was like, any thoughts? Maybe with me PDP head on as well and, and a little bit. The instant reaction for them was, it's still going to be extremely difficult to qualify. Uh, are we going to be paid for being a prelim, uh, a winner, a loser, etc.? So I still think uh, there's an awful lot of work for those players ranked from 64 to 1 to 8. The riches are there for you know, players ranked 1 to 8. You're earning a fantastic life if you're seeded 1 to number 16 in the world. I remember Kim Hybrids once saying, in, if you're a top 16 player, really enjoy it because you're invited to the European tours. I still think there's more to be done um, so that those players, you know, from, from rank from, you know, 33 down to one to eight, we could be doing more for them. And then for the players on the other tours, the Challenge Tour, the Dev Tour, the Women's League, the players that don't get their card, and then obviously you've got the other tours, Australia, New Zealand, the CDC. For a player that doesn't get their tour card or a player that had a very successful year without a tour card and doesn't get one at Q School, this is such a carrot dangled. Uh, yeah, absolutely, and they're the big winners for me. I mean, we could have a situation of Wesley Plazier winning both Masters. I mean, there, there's a story and a half there. So... Um, you know, yeah, they're the big winners for me. That opportunity of, of coming over to the World Masters in front of a, an incredible... I mean, the PDC run it brilliantly. You know, I, I played my last World Masters final against Adam Smith-Neal was in front of 50 people in Bridlington. And then these, you know, these players coming over from... And I remember playing in the ice rink in Hull somewhere. Mm -hmm. Team Japan, Team Canada, Team South Korea. And I thought, is this the best that we can offer when those players come over at the PDC to Rampack Milton Keynes? They're going to really enjoy the experience. You mentioned Wesley Pazir winning the WDF World Masters in Hungary a few weeks ago. What do you think the impact's going to be on them, the fact that the PDC have announced their World Masters, the Winman World Masters? I think the World Masters died when they changed it from set play down to leg play. It didn't feel like the World Masters no more. I mean, I didn't invite to go myself this year. You know, um, I never often wanted to kick an organisation that made me when I'm down. But the the downfall for the WDF is when they change the format of the World Masters. And um, look, it's now been rejuvenated, revitalised. The PDC will make this an incredible success. Also clashes with the Dutch Open at the same time as well, which is going to, I suppose, have a bit of a double dip effect. The, the, yeah, the Dutch Open is the most incredible Open uh, in the WDF system. You've got to go in there and experience it. But if someone offers me an opportunity to play in the World Masters under the PDC banner, I know which one I would choose. And of course, players could potentially go out of the World Masters group stage and then still play the Dutch Open mm -hmm. at the weekend, such as the opportunities across the pyramid and across all organisations that players have. I want to talk about the intricacies of the format because it's absolutely cut for. You're going to be playing it again, obviously, in Sunderland in a few weeks' time. The best of three legs are set. What's that like to play in as a player? Because I can imagine, unlike the best of five that you play at a world championship, there's no wiggle. Yeah, you're never out of it. 
you know, one leg, you, you know, you're, you're two nil down, one nil down. Uh, it was my opening World Masters game against Johan Engström. I win one game, you're right back in the competition. It's cutthroat, it's exciting, and it's what the World Masters is all about. It's great to see that that is the format. What can the viewers look forward to when you're, when you're watching this format? I think different type of results I wouldn't expect to see. I mean, we're on the back of Richie Eddowes versus Jermaine Watamina, which is a shame. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is the World Masters could create a, a different semi-final final than you used to because it is so cutthroat. However, if you get through those early rounds, the longer it gets on, uh, you know, you, the cream will often rise to the top. It'll be exciting. It'll be different. I think the audience will love it. And, uh, yeah, just another massive tick. And it's a ranking event mm -hmm. in January, you know, at, at a time where you go, you're waiting for the world match play already after uh, the UK Open. Uh, so it's just another uh, fantastic opportunity for the players. Was that also part of the problem as well? Because when we've got to the Masters in the past, particularly when it moved to January, there was perhaps one or two players where you got the feeling of this is just a televised tournament after I've come off a holiday. Maybe the mm -hmm. preparation for that tournament shouldn't have been or isn't as it would be for a world championship or a world match play, for example. But when you add the prestige of the competition, add the fact that, add the fact there's ranking points on offer and we don't know how many ranking points on offer, but you'd imagine they'd be substantial. For players that maybe in the past would have gone through the motions and maybe just pass it off as another TV tournament, this becomes a major opportunity. Absolutely. I think that was my first answer to the original question, the fact that when Alexander Palace has finished... That, the, the Masters, I was never a fan of. You know, you could see players were rusty. You could see players were just getting the darts out for the first time since Alexander Palace. They'd be mad to, to not start practising. after You know, have your break after Alexander Palace. You know, the lucky players will go on to Bahrain, but you should be preparing like a... Like a it's a ranking event. Mm -hmm. You know, it can change lives. It'll, it's going to be an awful lot of money uh, towards the winner there. I think, it's, um, I think it's the best thing that could be done for the Masters. Back in 1997, they brought back the news of the World Tournament for one year, and Phil Taylor's ultimate determination was to win that tournament because of the names that won it previously. He'd won five world titles at the time. He was dominating the sport, unlike we've ever seen before. But he wanted to win that one tournament. Mm. For the likes of a Luke Humphreys, for the likes of a Luke Littler, the likes of players that have had so much success in the PDC but maybe haven't played so much in the BDO before or had the chance to win the World Masters, before will there be an extra urge to win this competition for the history of the tournament and the fact that they haven't had the chance to play in that tournament before it'd be interesting for luke littler to answer that question because the world masters is sort of maybe five six seven years ago if you, when it was really at the four um so for the younger players coming through it might be a case of you know what is the world masters but for those people you know those players in their 30s and 40s and i tell you what when the bdo sold off all the trophies i wish i had bought that world masters now because i don't know if the pdc will be looking at a new trophy or that iconic win my world master trophy that's out there um look if i was luke littler uh, if I was a young player, the World Masters would be high on my agenda. It's in, it's got all the history in the world, and uh, it it'd be one that I'd want on my CV. In the future, how big could this be for the PC? We knew how big it was for the BDO and the WDF, how major a tournament it, it, it is, and it was for them then. How major a tournament could this be for the PDC in the future, because in the history of it prior? Yeah, it's, it's all about the timing as well. Like, so now you've got that pathway for the season. Now you've got Alexander Palace, you've got the, you've got the Masters, you've got the UK Open, then you kick into the... You know, what we're used to with the match play, the players' championships, the Grand Slam, etc., Grand Prix. So now that, I think that calendar is, I mean, it's so stacked right now. The Win My World Masters could be right high on the agenda of all players. There's been clamour on social media about inviting former champions into the competition. Would that be something that would be possibly an idea? Would that be something that Glenn Durrant would like to partake in? No, definitely not me, but Bob Anderson. You know, when I, I don't know about you, Henry, uh, there's a big age difference between us, but when I think of the World Masters, I instantly think of Bob Anderson. I don't know what your first thoughts are when you think of the World Masters. I think it'd be a great coup for someone like uh, Bob Anderson to throw the first start in the rebranded World Masters. Um, he's the one for me if there was going to be sort of invites. 
Phil Taylor, you were always, but I don't think of Phil Taylor when I think of the World mm. Masters. Uh, so for me, Bob Anderson gets the invite and throws the first. Uh, a bit like the golf where Arnold yeah. Palmer will take the first shot in the in, in the Masters, the Open, etc. And I suppose that's where the history stems back. I mean, you saw the, the video that the PDC put out. It went back to Dickie Davis, mm. World of Sport. Massive yeah. programme back in the 1980s. That was kind of when the BDO were at their most prominent, when that tournament probably had the most prominence. And I suppose there's that nod back to nostalgia. And I suppose for the PDC, they branded it as that tournament that was so big back in the heyday. How do you think the the history of that competition, though, when the PDC do launch it, how do you think that they will assess the history of, of, of that competition? I think they'll have to get the balance right. You know, they the, the don't look backwards, the PDC. It will have the glitz and the glamour of a, a TV ranking event. Um, but I think they'll, they'll use the nostalgia, the history, the whole culture of the World Masters, what it's about, but they'll modernise it and you know they will make the World Masters the you know one of the great tournaments, that I'm sure of. And a lot of that is based on the fact that they're sticking to the format of Sepler. Just finally on it, do you think it will rekindle the old memories of the Masters or do you think it's going to be something that will be more epitomised to the modern age, the modern game? I think there's a mixture of that answer too. I think they will... They will strive to make sure that the history is there for the World Masters, but the PDC will put their twist on it and it will become a, a, just a, the most amazing tournament. OK, there's some decent names on the trophy and some guy called Glenn Doan who won it, try say. And, and comfy seats to go, so it's all good. <laughs> well, Glenn, thank you very much for your company. Thank you for your company as well. The World Masters is back from January in 2025 and some of the biggest names are looking to compete for one of the sport's most historic trophies.